Hello, welcome to Hawk Math. Today we're going to be finding the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x to the 6 dx. Now, where do we start with this? Well, the first thing I see is that 1 plus x to the 6 actually factors because it's a, a sum of cubes. So we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared times x to the 4th minus x squared plus 1. And that's just using the, the sum of cubes formula. If you see you expand that out, you, deemed, you do in fact get the same thing. But now what do we do? We're stuck. I don't want to do partial fraction with this because it would be really annoying to do partial fraction with an x to the fourth term. So what can we do instead? Well, we have two terms, and what would happen if we were able to get one of these to cancel out? If you were to add an x squared, and then do this as one term, and then subtract an x squared as a different term, maybe something would work out. Because if you look, if you take this term right here, the x squareds cancel, and you have a, a still a messy integral, we can deal with that later. And then this x squared, would be an x squared over 1 plus x to the 6, and that's an easy um, arctanent formula. So this looks like it'll work. So we can then split this up, so this equals the integral from 0 to 1. Now we can take this first part, ignoring this, 1 plus x squared will cancel with this 1 plus x squared, leaving us with a 1 over x to the 4th minus x squared plus 1 dx. And then we're going to have the second half, which is going to be a minus integral from 0 to 1. And now I'm going to rewrite the denominator as this part again. And this x squared up here, and 1 plus x to the 6 dx. And now, as I previously mentioned, this is really easy to integrate, so you can do a u sub if you wanted, u equals x cubed, and this would become the du on the numerator. So we know how to integrate this part. But how do we integrate this part? Well, taking inspiration from what we did up here, maybe we can try some more creative manipulations. So what would happen if we were to add x squared? Again, if you were to divide by x squared on this fraction, you'd be left with a 1 over x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And that's actually, as you see later, that's actually not that bad to integrate. And so this might work. Well, so what can we do to get this back to the original form? Well, we have to subtract an x squared. Okay, but what do we do with this extra x squared? We can't integrate x squared over this. So what we can do, though, is if we can add another 1 and then multiply the whole fraction by 1 half. And so as you see, the numerator is really the same thing because you have a 1 plus 1 is 2 times one half just leave you the one so it's the same as the original problem but we can separate it into two parts one with one plus x squared and one minus x squared minus one so now let's continue from here so splitting this up this equals one half times the integral from zero to one of this first part is going to be a one plus x squared over x to the fourth minus x squared plus one dx and then you're gonna have a plus one half times the integral from zero to one of the second part so it's going to be one minus x squared over the same denominator, x to the fourth, minus x squared plus one dx. Okay, and then we're gonna have this. So integrating this is gonna leave us with a minus one third arctangent of x cubed evaluated from zero to one. So now plugging in one into this right here, we have arctangent of one is pi over four. So then this is gonna be a minus pi over four times one third, and arctangent of zero, zero. So this is just gonna be left with a minus pi over 12. Now I'm gonna clear up the board and move everything up and we'll be right back. Now, how do we continue with these two? Well, as I previously said, we can actually divide by x squared and it'll actually get us somewhere. And so doing that, we have one half the integral from zero to one of one over x squared plus one over x squared minus one plus one over x squared dx. Now, why do we wanna do this? Well, if we look at the numerator, one over x squared plus one, that is the derivative of one minus one over x. And this denominator can actually be factored as a 1 minus 1 over x squared plus some constant. And we can do the same exact thing to this over here. So we have another plus 1 half integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared dx minus pi over 12. Okay, so now, as I previously said, we can rewrite the denominator. And so this equals 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared plus 1. Now we want this to be the derivative of x minus 1 over x squared, because if we take the derivative of this inside, we'll get 1 plus 1 over x squared, which is the numerator. So then if we were to square this out, what do we get? We get an x squared right there. We get a plus 1 over x squared right there. And then we're going to have a minus 2. So all we need to do is add 1 to this to get the original form. So dx. Okay, now the second one, we'll have a plus 1 half integral from 0 to 1 of this. This Again, this top part now is 1 over x squared minus 1. So we keep that. And the denominator, we're going to want it to be a x plus 1 over x 
quantity squared because when you square this, you'll get an x one over x squared plus x squared, and then you have a plus two, so we need to do a minus three dx, and then we have to solve minus pi over twelve. Okay, now we can go ahead with that substitution, or we can just straight up integrate these. Well, we know to integrate this, it's just going to be our tangent of x minus one over x, since the numerator is a derivative of this part right here. Now the second part is a little bit different. We can, I'm going to do a u sub u equals x plus one over x, and we'll I'll rewrite that. So this equals one half arctangent of x minus one over x evaluated from zero to one. And I'm gonna do the u sub without showing the work. But it's gonna be plus one half integral. Okay, well, when we change the substitution, I'm gonna say u equals x plus one over x. So when you plug in zero, that's gonna become infinity. And then when you plug in one, this is gonna become one plus one over one, which is two, okay? And then you have the numerator is negative du. So we can take that negative sign actually use it to flip these bounds right here. So you have the integral from two to infinity. And then we'll have a du over u squared minus three. Okay, and then we still have this minus pi over 12 at the end. Okay, I'm gonna clear up the board and we can continue from there. Okay, now evaluating this first part, we have one half times the arctangent. Uh, well, plugging in one, we get one minus one over one, which is just zero. And then plugging in zero, we have a zero minus one over zero. One over zero is gonna go to infinity. This is gonna become arctangent of negative infinity. So we have a minus one half arctangent of negative infinity is gonna be negative pi over two. And then I'm gonna bring this negative one twelfth over here. So we have minus, uh, pi over 12. Okay, and then we have this plus one half integral from two to infinity of one over u squared minus three. Now we can actually use a uh, factor of this as a difference of squares. So I'm gonna write this as plus one half integral from two to infinity of one over u plus root three times u minus root three du. Okay, now I'm gonna rewrite all this in combine. So we have arctangent of zero, zero. Then we have this is gonna be a pi over four minus a pi over 12. And okay, pi over four times three is three pi over 12 minus pi over 12 is two pi over 12, which equals pi over six. So this first part is gonna be, that whole thing is gonna be pi over six. So we now have pi over six. And now we have this part right here, which you can separate using partial fractions. So I'll rewrite this again though. One half integral from zero to two to infinity of one over u plus root three times u minus root three du. Okay, now splitting this up using partial fractions, we have this equals pi over six plus one half times the integral from two to infinity. Now this first part, if you were to plug in root three or into this, you'd have a one over two root three. So you have a one over two root three over u minus root three du. And then you're gonna have a plus, the other one is one half integral from two to infinity. If you're plugging a negative root three into here, you'd get a one over negative two root three, negative one over two root three over u plus root three du. And I'm actually gonna check this really quickly to make sure that I did this right. If you multiply this by u plus root three, you get one over two root three u. And you have minus one over two root three u, those u's would cancel. You have a root three times this is one half, and you'd have a minus a negative one half, which is u plus one half, which is u one. So this is how you split up using partial fractions. Now we can integrate both of these using the natural law. So I'm gonna move it to the top and do that. Okay, now integrating as we said before, we have this equals pi over six plus one half times the natural log of u minus root three times the coefficient, I forgot to write it in front, so I'll write it over here, one over two root three. And then we have evaluated from two to infinity. Now the second part, we have a plus one half times negative one over two root three times the natural log of u plus root three. Sorry, I messed the route writing this right here, it should be a two. Um, evaluated from two to infinity. Now rewriting this, we have equals pi over six and then this one half times one over two root three is gonna be a plus one over four root three natural log of u minus root three evaluated from two to infinity plus, sorry, not a plus, a minus one over four root three natural log of u plus root three from two to infinity. Sorry, evaluated from two to infinity. So now I'm actually gonna combine these two together because we have the same coefficient. So this equals pi over six plus one over four root three times a natural log of u minus root three over u plus root three evaluated from two to infinity. And the reason the way I got that is I just combined these using the log properties because we have log of this minus log of this and it's going from two to infinity on both of them. So now this equals pi over six plus one over four root three 
times the quantity when you plug in infinity into this, what do you get? So you have a natural log of one, and natural log of one is zero. So you're gonna have a zero of minus, plug in two into this, you have two minus root three over two plus root three. So natural log of two minus root three, sorry, it's getting small, but I'll write it bigger in a second, two plus root three, and that's it. So I'm gonna re bring this back up to the top and then simplify our answer in a nicer form. Okay, now that we have this, I'm gonna, on the inside, I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate of two plus root three, and so then this will become equals pi over six minus, and the zero is gonna go in and bring the negative over here, minus one over four root three, natural log of, multiplying by two minus root three is gonna give us a two minus root three quantity squared over, this squared is four, minus three is one. Okay, now using log properties, I can bring this two to the front and cancel with that. So this equals pi over six minus one over two root three, natural log of two minus root three. And this is our final answer. Now note that there are actually many different ways to write this answer, but they all should be correct if you evaluate them numerically. So this should be accepted. So thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more like it and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions down below.